Imam al-Bukhari, may Allah have mercy on him, reported in his book on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said at the end of a long hadith, he said, وَأَعْطِي أَوْ فَأَعْطِي كُلَّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّهَ Give every deserving one or every one deserving a right, their due right. Islamic rights are those about which religious texts were revealed, whether from the Quran or the Sunnah. And they are rights that were ordained because of worldly benefits as well as benefits in the hereafter depend on fulfilling them. And warnings came in texts, <clears throat> warnings regarding neglecting them because their negligence will result in evil or corruption either in this world or, <coughs> or the hereafter. <clears throat> and rights become rights based on servitude, prophethood, blood relations, relations pertaining to marriage, like wife and in-laws and so on and so forth, or any relation or connection between the human being and his surroundings, whether that is the environment, other human beings, animals, so on and so forth. And in this series of khutbahs, we will address Islamic rights. But the most important, I am the highest on the list amongst Islamic rights are those pertaining to Allah the Almighty. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari. He said, I was riding behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a donkey called Ufayr. And he said to me, Ya Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, Atadri ma haqqullahi ala al-ibad? Do you know what is the right of Allah upon his slaves? He said, I said, Allah and his messenger know best. Thereupon the Prophet وسلم, said, the right of Allah upon his slaves is that they worship him and not associate anything with him. Two things in this narration, worshiping and not associating. Worshiping Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah Azza wa Jal created this universe with all that it contains. Created mankind and jinn to fulfill ibadah, worship to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah sent messengers and sent down scripts and uh, divine books for this right to be fulfilled. And it is a right. And when the slave fulfills it, he does not fulfill it voluntarily or having the choice to do or not to do. Rather, it's an obligation to fulfill. And ibadah worship encompasses everything that Allah loves. All deeds, whether said or acted, verbal or practical, whether inwardly by the heart, or outwardly by the body. And it goes to include and cover all aspects of uh, the human's life. 
So the slave performs all that he is ordained to do and stays away and refrains from everything that is prohibited by Allah for him to do as a way of fulfilling servitude to his Lord as well as expression, expressing full submission and submissiveness to Allah And this matter, brothers and sisters, is not a matter that's limited with time. It's an ongoing process which never ceases and it only ends by the departure of the soul. As Allah Azza wa Jal instructed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Wa'bud Rabbaka Hatta Yatiyaka Yaqeen. Worship your Lord until death comes to you. So worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal is an ongoing matter that covers all aspects of life. One must do with full submission to Allah. The second thing the Prophet mentioned in the narration is that they do not associate anything with Allah. Why was this mentioned after worship? You see, at the time of the Prophet, the Quraysh used to do certain acts of worship for Allah, acts of worship, but they used to ascribe partners to Allah, associate with Allah. And that's why this has to be a condition. So ibadah, worship alone is not enough. Enough. Allah has to be singled out in this worship. No one or nothing can be associated with Allah Azza wa Jal. And in many times, associating with Allah Azza wa Jal does not take the practical form. Rather, it is the inward associating with Allah, and this is the most lethal and dangerous on one's faith. This is the most dangerous, associating with Allah inwardly. We as believers believe that Allah Azza wa Jal has no partners in worship, in creation, in power, authority, and control, as well as him not having anything or anyone equal to him or parallel to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah said at the end of Surah Al-Ikhlas, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ And there is none, no one equivalent to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in all aspects. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal created this man, this weak, powerless human being, for this purpose. And this human being has to fulfill this right. But in order for Allah Azza wa Jal and out of His mercy and bounty, He facilitated the matter for us. He created all the things in this universe and subdued them to our service in order to facilitate our fulfillment to His right. What a merciful Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why when you try to list the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal, you'll fail. If you think that you can ever be grateful enough to Allah Azza wa Jal, then you're mistaken. If we, talk, if we take the least favor of Allah Azza wa Jal upon us, Regardless of what we do and how hard we strive, we can never thank Allah Azza wa Jal enough for His bounties and favors. 
And that's why Allah Azza wa has so many rights upon us. And enumerating these rights is impossible. So I'll just list few of them. Glorifying Allah Azza wa Honoring Him. Holding Allah Azza wa on high esteem is one of the rights of Allah Azza wa See, He is the greatest in His actions, in His names, in His qualities. All of His qualities are perfect and above any deficiency, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one in control and in power. And all of these are manifests of His greatness. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْضَتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَطْوِيَاتٌ بِيَمِينِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ They did not glorify Allah with true glorification while the earth entirely will be in his grip on the day of resurrection and the heavens will be folded in his right hand glory be to him subhanahu wa ta'ala wa lahu ma fi as-samawati wal ardi wa huwa al-'aliy al-'adhim and to him belongs all that is in the heavens and in the earth and he is the most high, the greatest, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another one of his rights is honoring his rituals or his rights, subhanahu wa ta'ala. By doing what he commands and refraining from what he prohibits. And by doing so, one shows piety and faith. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, ذَلِكْ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Whoever honors the rights of Allah, the rituals of Allah, the symbols of Allah, it is a sign of the piety of the heart. Fearing Allah Azza wa Remember I said sometimes we associate with Allah with our hearts and this is one such example, fear. Many a times you see people fearing humans more than they fear Allah Azza wa And therefore adhere to the human being's instruction even if it opposes and goes against the instructions of Allah Azza how can one not fear Allah when he describes his punishment as inna baqsha rabbika lashadeed indeed the punishment of your lord is stern and severe the soldiers of Allah azza wa jal are not known and cannot be listed it's only they're only known to him and when you say soldiers, don't think with the limited human mind of regular soldiers. The wind is a soldier of Allah. He destroyed nations with it. Hurricanes, floods, rain. All of these are soldiers of Allah Azza wa Jal. Earthquakes, thunders, all of that. Angels. But then let's go to another aspect. Depression, gloominess, tightness, fear, confusion, instability. All of these are soldiers Allah Azza wa Jal sends on those who disobey or disbelieve. So how can one not fear Allah? 
loving him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah described the believers saying, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Those who believe are stronger in love to Allah Azza wa Jal. Another right is to be bashful from Allah Azza wa Jal. How can we not be so when He's the one who sustains, when He's the one who blesses, when He's the one who forgives, when He's the one who facilitates. A man came to Ibrahim ibn al-Adham complaining about his inability to stop sinning. And he said, show me a way to stop sinning. He said, the first thing, when you're about to sin, when you want to sin, go into a kingdom that is not the kingdom of Allah. He said, subhanallah. Is there anything outside the kingdom of Allah Azza wa Jal? He said, then how can you not be bashful of Allah and ashamed of Him to disobey Him in His own kingdom? He said, when you're about to sin, then go to some place where He cannot see you nor hear you. He said, subhanallah, Allah Azza wa Jal ya'lamu kha'inat al-a'yuni wa ma tukhfi al-sudur. He knows the deception of the eyes and what the hearts conceal. There's nothing that is hidden. Nothing escapes Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, how can you then not be ashamed and bashful of Allah Azza wa Jal to disobey Him while He sees you and hears you? Then he said, when you want to sin, then eat from provisions other than the provisions of Allah. He said, subhanallah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, inna allaha huwa razzaq Allah is the, meaning the only one who provides. He said then, how can you not be ashamed of Allah, disobeying Him, while living in his kingdom, he sees you and hears you and provides for you and you consume his provisions. And yet, you're not ashamed of disobeying him. So the man broke in tears and pledged to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to strive hard to fulfill the rights of Allah. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa kum fastaghfiruhu innahu wa al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد One might say Okay, the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal are a lot and our faith weakens. So what are the means that will help and enable us to fulfill these rights of Allah Azza wa Jal with ease and without feeling, without feeling overburdened with the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal? Well, the people of knowledge listed few things that will help the person Fulfill the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal upon him. Number one, to remember and remind ourselves that at a given moment or second, we must depart this life. Because Allah says, Kullu nafsin maut. Each soul will taste death. And that after that, the only thing will benefit us is our fulfillment
to the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. يوم تجد كل نفس ما عملت من خير محضرة وما عملت من سوء. The day when each soul will find every good that it has done present and every evil that it has done. Another thing is to remember that on that petrifying day when Allah holds people to account that Allah Azza wa Jal will speak to each one of us as reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim narrated by Adi ibn Hatim radiallahu anhu the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Every one of you will stand on the day of resurrection in front of Allah. And Allah will address him without an interpreter. And one will look to his right and sees nothing. But what he has sent for and will look to his left and see nothing but what he has sent for and then look ahead of him see nothing but the fire of hell so protect yourselves from the fire of hell when one remembers this and reminds himself often with it it is indeed very helpful to enable us and help, uh, help us fulfill the rights of Allah and strive against ourselves and against our negligence. When, when one remembers that the only way to salvation is by making the scale of good deeds overweigh that of the bad deeds and that the only way to make this part of the scale heavy is by fulfilling the rights of Allah one indeed will strive very hard to fulfill it, to fulfill it. finally we need to remind ourselves that Allah Azza wa Jal does not need us at all, nor does He need our worship. Nor will He benefit from us fulfilling His rights. It is us who need Him. It is us who benefit by fulfilling His rights. Imam Muslim reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said conveying from Allah Azza wa Jal this is a Qudsi hadith that Allah said and it's a long narration I'm just quoting the part that we need here Allah says, O oh my slaves, all of you are misguided except for those whom I guide. So ask me for guidance and I will guide you. O oh my slaves, all of you are hungry except for those I provide food. So ask me for food and I will feed you. O oh my slaves, all of you are naked except for those whom I dress. So ask me for clothing and I will clothe you. O oh my slaves, you sin day and night. And I forgive all sins. So ask my forgiveness. 
and I will forgive you. You see how much we need Allah Azza wa Jal? We need Allah Azza wa Jal in every aspect of our life. As well as we need Him for our salvation in the hereafter. Isn't this enough reason for us to fulfill His rights? And I will conclude with a statement of Ibn Rajab. Rahmatullahi alayhi. He said, when the slaves, when the slave fulfills the rights of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will take care of all his worldly needs as well as the needs of the hereafter. What more do we need? What more can anyone ask for? But it takes one thing to get that in return. It takes a step on our side by fulfilling the rights of Allah. We ask Allah, we ask Allah's help in fulfilling His rights. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma gfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat.